So using the board that came with my paper, which is this, this is what came with the stack that I bought, I'm gonna make this be um, what holds my three rings here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find my ruler, there it is. I'm going to figure out about how deep in I want this because it needs to be wide enough to support them with a little, maybe a little bit of overhang. So I'm going to measure this out, cut my board, and then I'll show you how to fasten them into the book. So here's the tricky part. Because of the way that I designed this book, I'm going to have to keep with it. Um, I did want to have this inner portion in the dark leather, but because of the striping, I'm afraid that when it's closed, it may look kind of odd that there's dark strips in with that. So it may be more uniform if whatever's in here is the same color. So it's um, so it matches and goes with it. Uh, the other thing too is that um, I will have to cover some of this. So. I'm going to have to stitch the edge just as I did here so that it's uniform and goes all the way up. So what I've done, um, some of the um, the board you know, that I had left over, I cut out the strips and then I made these holes to, um, to go with these. So I measured it out, it's actually an inch wide to, um, to fit that for the pages. And I basically bored them out with my X-Acto knife, as you can see on the floor, how I did it. And it's quite simple. There really is no easier way unless you have a drill, which I don't. So that's really the best way to do it. If you don't have an X-Acto knife, a pair of scissors will work. The knife is just a lot sharper, so it makes it a bit quicker. But either way, it'll still get the job done. So right now what I'm doing is I'm measuring out. Let me move these aside measuring out what you know this internal part will be that goes right here in the middle so I have it here just laid down like that and I'm just gonna try and get that close there we go and then up here okay so now I'm just gonna trace with my pencil the edge and then I'm going to mark that it's there. It's the edge. Here, I'm just going to push it up a smidge so that I can mark that that is the other edge, like so. I'm going to cut this part, and I'm going to stitch this side of it. I'm pointing to the wrong part. This part, I'm going to stitch so that it matches this. But um, leave this part, let me move this, leave all this as much as you can for right now. So just cut straight across and don't worry about this mark at this moment. So I finished sewing this edge here and you can see um, so that it will match this other part and it will all be, uh, you like, like it's meant to be together like it's one piece. But here's where it gets tricky. So then you say to yourself, well, how do I know how much of this I'm going to need because um, I'm going to have to stitch this other edge. And once I get this all glued down, it's going to be really tricky to try and get this whole book up on the counter and into the sewing machine to get that other edge. So what you can do is I'm just pulling this up so you can see. Move, pencil. Um, what you can do here is you know that you're going to be using these two strips, right? And they are three-dimensional objects. So I need to figure out um, the measurement. I know it's one inch. So it's one inch for this side, one inch for this side, because this fabric is going to have to cover all of that area, right? So you're going to have to add four inches. So two and doubled. So four inches to this length. Um, of course, there is this part here to add to. It's a very, very small amount, but it will also be quadrupled because um, you have it. Actually, it'll be doubled. It's only going to travel this space twice. 
it goes up and over. It's not going to go under. So um, this small measurement here, um, you'll have to add in to the total length as well because it will have to travel this length. So it's going to be an additional four inches from this point. So just so you can eyeball it here. So it's going to be one, two, three, and then four with an additional little smidgen at the end here. And that's about how long it's going to have to be for it to span this distance and then cover these two pieces. So while I wait for the inner piece to dry, I of course had to uh, coffee stain it so that I don't get the white lines. Um, but while I wait for that, I thought I, I would just um, talk to you about the way that books are put together, at least the one that I'm mimicking. Oh, here we go. So as you can see, this book here, put that down, the way that the the hinges is it's, it's on the inside. So the end, the spine caps over it and it bends like that, which is the way that I have my book set up too. There's um, the, you know, it opens up like that. You can see. Uh, anyway, so the thing that I wanted to show you was also how it's put together on the inside. You can see that the pages are connected underneath this lip here. And when we put in our pages, we're going to ensure that that piece that holds the nails actually sits on this inner side and not up here because uh, otherwise every time you open it, it would force you know your first few pages open and it would just be a little too harsh. Um, so you want to make sure that, that this is free and clear of anything, that nothing is attached to it so it can open independently. The other thing I wanted to show you too, because I, I have my my little strips there laid out to start putting them in. Here at the top, you can see the head collar on here. That's the uh, yellow and red striping. It's just a, a bit of fabric to cover the gap between the spine and the pages, just so it looks nice. You can always do that too. I was thinking of doing it, but mine fits rather snugly, and I just don't know if I want to put anything in there. But if I did put anything, it would just be this fabric just bunched. I'd probably just glue right about there so that it puffs a little bit. And that way you'd have, you know, a little puffy section there to bridge that gap. But you don't have to order from a bookstore to get a head collar. Um, I mean, something this tiny, they would be the best place to find it. However, any fabric store or craft store that carries fabric uh, will have something very similar to this that's used um, as borders for upholstery and, and things like that. So you can still find something very similar to it and use that instead. And they come in a variety of colors and, and um, um, sizes. Uh, there's all different widths. And, and um, that way you can rectify any miscalculations you may have made in your book. So if there's a huge gap, you can fill it with a really big one. A uh, big cord, and that way it will look nice and intentional. The other thing to notice too is you see the bookmark here, how it lays flat and then goes in. So it comes up and over, and that's the way I'm going to have mine go too. So I'm going to open this up, and I want all three of them evenly spaced right here on the spine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them down to here first. And then I'm going to lay this on top, you know, the other way, like so, like that, so that it covers that seam. And that way they can come out and over and uh, be used as, as bookmarks. So I'm just waiting for this to finish drying. It's a little damp. It's almost there. I just don't want... Um, the glue taking some of that moisture and maybe not curing all the way. So I want to make sure it's dry before I proceed forward. So I don't know if you can tell, but I went ahead and glued these down. And even though it's a little bit shiny, they look like they're dry. So I'm going to go ahead on to the next step. And what I'm going to do 
is on the other side of this, I drew a line straight down the middle, which, you know, I just folded it in half and then with a pencil drew the line. So I drew a line straight down the middle so that I could see where the center is when I lay it down so I can look and say, okay, that's center. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set that aside for a moment. I'm going to put the glue all along the spine. I'm not going to put it into this crevice here. Um, I'm going to leave it alone because I really don't want fabric going down in here because it could push down or, you know, I want to leave this open cavity of air. Um, that, or maybe use more gluing. I wish I was more thorough on this side. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paint this with the glue. Ooh, ah, oh, crap. If I don't get it on my pants first, that's beat. Ah, oh, geez. Where's my water? I do have to get this because once it dries, that's it. It's in there. It is water soluble. So you can wash it off so long as it's wet. So I think, I think that's good. All right, moving on. Don't drop your glue laden paintbrush on your pants. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold this top part so they don't start moving on me. I wanna paint right to the edge at the top there. Make sure that I get it in here really, really well because I don't want to do like I did on this side. I think it was the first side that I did where I really didn't put it on that thick. And I'm not saying to glob it on, but I seem to have missed a few spots and it shows. So I'm really not happy about that. So just make sure you get it on there all the way. Not globbed on, but you know, covered. And then, um, and then it should be fine. So I'm just going to make sure that I cover this well, especially being that it's the spine. I don't want this coming undone in any part. If you have a little weak spot, that's it. You know, it'll just work on it until it finally comes apart in that area. And I don't want to have to do any maintenance on this later. Once it's done, it's done. I put in the work, so I don't want to have to go back at it again for a second time. Okay, so that's well covered. Cap my glue so it doesn't dry on me. And I'm going to bring back my side piece. I have decided this is the side I want to show on the front. My center line is there. Ooh, fuzz ball or something. So that's my center. And I'm going to use that to kind of gauge this part. So there's my center line. Now I'll lay this down. Make sure that it's on oh, there. Good. Oh my lord, someone's house is burning down. It's been sirens like crazy all day. Doesn't help the firehouse is right up the street from me, so I hear about every fire and every accident that ever happens. I'm pressing these edges in because I want to make sure they don't come out because the, the little bookmarks do have some thickness to them. So they're going to want to pull that part up. So I'm actually going to top them off with a little more glue up here just to make sure they don't start doing anything funny. Funny ha ha, no, no, they'll do something funny strange and then annoy me because they won't stop. Okay. There we go. That's pretty good. Pressing them in, some of the glue is going to ooze out a little, but that's okay. And the rest of this feels pretty good. And it's probably on enough. Yep, 
that I can go on to the next step. Perfect. So that is done. And if you can see that, see how it, the fold, that part just goes right in there. Very nice. Okay. So now, 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 let's put in these here. Now I want to make sure that the holes line up, that they're the same and that they are the way my pages go. Yes. Okay, great. So I am going to lay this down how I want it and I'm going to paint this part and then lay that flap on top of it so it stays. So let me go ahead and get that going. That's where I'm not going to worry about the holes at this point. So right now it's about getting it stuck on here. I just want to make sure it doesn't come off. Get this glue on. Move ruler. Okay. All of my edges are done. So I'm going to lay this down. Concentrating so I got real quiet. Right about there. And I'm going to lay this flat down on top. Make sure it doesn't push it because it was trying. Okay. So like that. Perfect. Okay, great. So I'm just pressing this down, making sure that it stays. Okay, and if you can see, this hinge is still free to move about. Nothing is attached to it. This is, this is its own, own thing here. Okay, great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check Remember how I made this here to match up to this? I want to make sure that it matches up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it there. I'm going to look at it. Okay. So this is going to fit like that. Perfect. So I'm not really so concerned about this being flush because it's never really going to turn this way. So the fact that it's a hair short turning this way is fine. It has plenty of room to go this way, which is what's important. So right now, instead of gluing this on the next thing and then realizing, oh no, I'm short. Instead, I'm going to put the glue on it, but I'm going to let it hang for a little because I'm going to put the glue on here and then I will get this set up and then squish it up to it so that then it's, it sticks and it's together because it's really not a big deal if this part doesn't bend like this. For it to bend all the way like this, it's going to take far more area than, uh, than I want to give up. So I don't want to do that, and it's not necessary. This was the important thing, was to get this part flush down because it, it needs to be able to open this way. And then the next important thing is making sure that this part here lines up. And that's it. So I'm going to plug along. I'll show you once I'm all done. So I waited until the glue was a little bit dry and I stuck these nails through um, just to make sure that um, that it, it, it'll fit, but mostly that the fabric, the way that the glue dries, it's, um, I stuck the, I probably should have recorded it, but I put in the X-Acto knife and spun it around. And because this is a plastic, it really didn't bore a hole like it did in the cardboard. 
And the fact that there was a lot of glue on the other side, I thought that maybe if I push these through, it would push the fabric out and spread it so that it glues the inside walls. So it would make a nice opening for these. So I'm leaving them in there for now until this fully dries and making sure that they stay pressed down. And then hopefully I'll be able to pull these back out and I'll have a nice finished off hole on the inside just to make it a lot easier and uh, and of course it'll look a lot nicer too. And I also wanna do that to the other side. Once I do that, I'll push it back through the other way. And that way I should have a clean opening for each one of these on either side. So here we are. I believe it is all dry. And as you can see, I did the other side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these screws out and, um, and just check my work here. I'm trying to do it one-handed. It's not really working out for me. That's some serious friction going on. Ooh. And you can see that's, that's rather nice. A little bit of a white edge because I did not tea stain the inside or at least this side. Probably would have been good. I didn't think of that. Um, but for anyone watching, that's good to know. So if you don't want that, go ahead and tea or coffee stain the whole side. Now, if you do not like this top end showing, I think it looks nice, especially with this color. I think it, you know, studded like that. It looks really great. But let's say you don't like that and on this side um, when you go to put your pages in you don't want that that showing what you could do is you could put it in this end now so that it's embedded inside and then glue this part down and that way when you open your book you won't have it showing it'll be inside permanently in here you just make sure that on this end um, Obviously that won't be there, but when the screw end that goes into this will have to be exposed in the back of your book so you can get into it. But at least aesthetically, you won't have to look at it every time you open your book. You'll have a nice clean edge here. And uh, and this will just be permanently stuck like that. And then anytime you take things out, it'll be from this end. You'll just shimmy everything out that way and it'll work out fine. So I'm gonna take out my screws and I'm gonna do the same thing, but to this side. Now remember, this time, even though I'm gonna put glue all over here and all over here, I'm not gonna start gluing this part first. The first thing I'm gonna do is glue down this to make sure this matches exactly. And then I'm gonna push with my fingers up and then work it that way because it is more important to me that this matches to the millimeter rather than this. This really doesn't matter to me if there's a little bit of a gap, you know, and it doesn't go all the way like that, it's fine because it'll it'll go this way. So remember, that's how we're gonna do this side if you decided to do this design. So as you can see, I have both sides done now. So this side is all finished. And I pinched the ends so that they would close and um, to make them nice and neat you can see that. So it's nice and tight and closed and then even the inner, you know, even the holes, I um, try to tuck them in if any of those little bits started to come back out. I would use the nail and push it back and then roll it to try and coax it back and tuck it inside. And I do spin and wiggle them every now and then to make sure that the glue isn't drying around the screw. And uh, it also prudges around and makes sure that they're nice and straight. So I'm really just waiting for this to dry now. I just wanted to show you how how it turned out. So um, so just waiting for that, and then I'll show you the papers. Okay, so I am just waiting for the final drying but I'm basically at a point where I'm starting to prepare my end papers. Now, the ones that I chose um, are of vegetation, 
they're not from trees, so um, I was happy about that. I believe they're stained with carrot um, because that was in a part of the um, the ingredient description. I'm not sure what the plants are, if these are parts of the carrot tops or what they are exactly, but I love these ragged edges. If you can, if you can see them, um, they just get real fine and wispy, and I really like that on the outside. You know, to kind of lay on that the contrast of this dark. And then I will cut them right to this line with an X-Acto knife so you can still see uh, the stitched edge. But uh, clearly the paper was a lot bigger than exactly what I needed. So in order to get this ragged edge on the other part, I'm going to tear it. And I just wanted to show you how that's done. I'm going to lay a metal ruler down um, pretty firmly. Just make sure I have it to where I want it. There we are. And then I'm just going to rip from this side over. And it's pretty tough to get it started. There we go. So I'm going to try. Oh, the other one was so much easier. This one's really fighting it. There we go. And then I have a torn edge. I might even I'll take this corner off. There we go. So now I have ragged edges all the way around. Try and feather this a bit more. Come on. Just want to take that little corner. I don't like it. I think it's because of the fibers. There we go. Perfect. So my papers are prepared. I'm just going to nitpick at this corner. I can already tell. Because the plant fibers are just in that spot, they're really holding on. Okay, great. So I'm actually going to glue these down first, and then with my X Acto knife, I'm going to uh, because it's such fine paper in comparison to this, I'm going to cut through this long before I cut through any of this. So I'm just going to do one pass and get it. And that way it'll be perfect right to the edge. And you won't have to worry about cutting through my backer board.